Hi, Don Garbutt here. In this video, I'm going to talk about using the Sculpture Synth as a signal processor. Initially, the Sculpture Synth can be thought of as a physical modeled string. The string is controlled by three objects here, which are used to both impart energy into the string and to also dampen the string. Through combinations of these objects, also controlling the position of those objects and the position of two simulated pickups, we get a pretty interesting range of effects from the vibrating string. The pluck string can actually be made out of different types of material, nylon, wood, glass, or steel, or anywhere in between. Down here you have the modulator selection area, in which you can select low frequency oscillators, jitter values, vibrato assignments, that sort of thing, MIDI input controllers, velocity and randomness generators. You have a morph pad here, which allows you to morph between different presets, so you see the parameters changing as I move the morph ball. Over here, you've got a couple of envelope generators, which can be multi-segmented and time-syncable. And like the low-frequency oscillators and the other modulation sources, there are a large number of targets that those can be assigned to. This section allows you to superimpose the timbral identity of a physical object on your string sound. These templates are derived from impulse responses taken inside the objects. Here you have a typical envelope generator, some stereo imaging capabilities, delay system, filters, and a wave shaper. In here you've got controls to control the damping effects of the surrounding air around the string. Here you have the pitch stability characteristic, and here you have the number of harmonics which are generated by the string when you play. And you also have keyboard scaling of all those various parameters. Here's a short MIDI track to demonstrate some of the sounds of the sculpture synth. In this piece I've got a low frequency oscillator modulating pickup A's position with a sine wave that rolls back and forth every two bars. And I'm also using that low frequency oscillator to modulate the position of object 3, which is the damper. Modulating the damper means moving its position up and down the string. I'm using LFO2 in a sample and hold mode to produce random values every 16th note to control the strength of the damping effect. And that randomness of the strength value causes some notes to sound like harmonics and others to sound like open strings. I'm also using that low frequency oscillator to randomly change the position of the pick. Now let's take a look at the Sculpture Synth as a processor of external audio. First take an audio track, send its output to a bus. I usually set it to pre-fader so that its level is not dependent on the fader level here. Set the bus signal to no output so that we don't hear the audio coming through the bus. Go back to the Sculpture Synth and choose bus 1 as the sidechain input. Now that bus 1 signal becomes available at object number 2, external input. Now that you've established the input audio, you'll also need MIDI note events which tune the string. The audio will energize the string, but the tuning of the string will be controlled from the MIDI keyboard. This fader here is a low-pass filter, and I usually set it to maximum so that we get maximal brightness in the input signal. Also, I've set up a low-frequency oscillator to modulate the position of the pickups to give us a little bit of a stereo imaging effect. What I'm going to do is play with the media loss fader here and have a listen to this example. By carefully combining the fundamental principles of quantum mechanics and general relativity, physicists are quantum gravity. 
than necessary. The allowed quantum states of space are represented by diagrams of lines and nodes called spin networks. Quantum spacetime corresponds to similar diagrams called spin foams, in which spin networks evolve over time. Loop quantum gravity predicts that space comes in discrete lumps, the smallest of which is about a cubic point length or 10 to the minus 99 cubic centimeters. Time proceeds in discrete things are about a planet time or 10 to the minus 43 seconds. So as you can hear, the string acts like a resonator, where the pitch is controlled from the keyboard, but the energizing of the string comes from the external audio. Here's another example of how the sculpture synth can act as a resonator for external audio. In this case, I'm just going to send in a drum rhythm. <laughs> 